Welcome to Going Fishing with Brett Raymer from Tank. This is episode number nine. Nine. Yes, nine. 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 Wow. <laughs> Today, we are, first off, it's great to see you guys. Yeah. Likewise, you too. It's always nice to see you guys. Today, we're breaking down this. I'm excited. Season two, episode number one is titled Fish Out of Water. Happened 10 years ago. When did you guys find out that you were picked up for a second season? So, um, I believe the first what happened was, let me remember in the first episode, we talked about how it went, right? They get the good news and the bad yes, news. Yes, yes. Right? And then we got six episodes. And then right after they aired the six episodes, we got signed like that. What was, this, what was the last one? Which one? Sixth. The sixth? Yeah, what mean? That, what, that aired. The sixth, I don't know which, oh, the exact six, but we had right. six the right. first we had season. Six, yeah, yeah, right. And then it went to 12. And then it went to 12. Went to 12. But yes. this episode is the first episode when we're learning to do it the right way. Right, because <laughs> season one was the wrong way, right? Because yes. it took us almost a whole year to basically film the first season. So coming into season two, we got this new episode. You know, it's in Long Island, yeah, we're and we're, good. we're super excited. We're feeling good. So yeah. that's kind of how it was going. Well, did they make any changes? I mean, I think we see changes, but they did. The producers of the network say, "Okay, you're back for season number two, but we want you to do this differently." So they made some changes as far as they wanted, you know, me and Wade to be in everything. Mm -hmm. Like, literally, in the beginning, Wade and I had to be in every scene together. And if you watch some of the earlier episodes, you'll see that we're always together. But then as time goes on, we start separating to get more done. Because to get me and him together at the same time was always the difficulty in the beginning because we were running a business, mm -hmm. too. And at this point, we didn't know how to manipulate the business and the TV show at the same time. So we were literally like in our offices going, get out, we're working, we're working, oh. you know, stop. And then they're like, no, you got to film. Oh, and then on top of it, tours were coming and everyone wanted to take pictures. Yes. Season two, that's when it started tours. Like mm -hmm. people were like starting to realize. And that's when I was like, Agnes, uh -huh, look out the window. Here they come. <laughs> this time yeah, line up. They, and they were. Now, yeah. were you charging for tours at the time? Or who's, who's yeah. the idea was it to start but charging no, for tours? No, not initially. People would just come. Yeah, they would just come in the beginning. But then what we did is we started, uh, my ex, Trisha, she came up with this idea. I was sitting home one day, and she's like, hey, you guys should charge people. You know, we should do a tour. And I'm like, well, why don't you go talk to Wade? Because we got to run through Wade. I was like, talk to Wade and see if that'll work. So she talked to Wade, and it worked out. And Next thing you know, not only we have her doing tours, we had a tour bus that would actually come and drop people off and actually take them around, mm -hmm. and they would pay the tour company to actually do that. And they would go to other shows here filmed in Vegas, right? Yeah, so Pawn Stars, Pawn Stars, yeah. Yeah, so it was a Pawn Stars, Tank, and Restoration. Yeah, oh, Rich Restoration. Rich Restoration, Rich Restoration yeah. yeah. Did we see a salary increase with season two? Yeah, yeah. not a lot, but yeah. Were you guys paid like a per episode or is that? Yeah, it was always paid per episode. Yeah. We don't get any residuals. People yeah. like, you guys must be still getting paid. That was a shock when you guys reveal a couple yeah. episodes yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah no yeah. residuals. No residuals, but um, you know what? It's good for advertisement. Right? It still yeah. promotes our brand. It yeah. still builds our brand. It still promotes the things that we're doing. It still makes us relevant. So, Did you know going into season two that they're going to do X amount of episodes? They say, we're back for season yes. two, we want 10 episodes. Yes, yeah, they, tell you, they tell you in your contract. They wanted 20. For season okay. two. That's a, so the show was such a huge success, season one, mm -hmm. that they came back with 20 episodes. Then 20 episodes led to another 20. Then season three is when the next contract got signed. And that's when our pay started substantially increasing. Yeah, that's that's, that's when the races, yeah. yeah. <laughs> season three is the sweet spot. That's yeah. Okay, that's the sweet spot. In this episode, you go, you go back to Long Island. Now, when the show first started, was the plan for it to do travel builds, or was the plan for it just to do builds in Las Vegas? Well, I mean, they wanted to keep it as close to Vegas as possible, mm -hmm. but, I mean, they didn't have a problem with traveling to New York, especially with our roots being from New York. Yeah. Going back, doing stuff in New York, being able to do things, was they thought that was going to be, you know, good catalyst for the show. They yeah. just saw how it evolved, and obviously they wanted to do it here because budget-wise. Yeah. And then as they started they saying, oh, we got something, okay, let's put a little bit more money into it. So. You know, if you, it's really funny, is it's, I notice the business side of the TV show. So when we first started the TV show, you can see the advertisements, who was advertising, right? As season two and three started moving on, you started seeing Disney and Walmart mm -hmm. and Ford. Toyota. Whereas before, you know, you might not have seen the major big box brands on Animal Planet. But as soon as Tank really, I mean, we talk about it all the time, in my opinion, I believe that our show transformed that network to making it like to like the, I call it the big baller network, mm -hmm. right? Because everybody started watching that network. All the big players started coming, you know, and it was, it was exciting to see that, that evolving. 
Glad it worked with show sponsors because you bring it up. There's, there's something I think about. I remember there was one episode where you had to mail something, and you're like, let's FedEx. get out of the FedEx yeah, store. Yeah, FedEx. Pack yeah. and it, it's, I'm literally watching a commercial, but you're not saying it's a commercial. Are you guys getting endorsement fees for that? So, no. is that the network? so that's the network. So we would get, there were certain commercials that we did. We actually did, I did a Geico commercial. I did two Toyota commercials. On, outside of the show. Oh, outside of the yeah. show, but for Animal Planet. Okay. So Animal Planet. It was tied. Book, it was tied, you know, it was booked. Collaboration. Correct. And they paid us for those, but in, like, uh, they would call it uh, a product placement. So anything yeah. that would go in the show was based on product placement, and that was paid for by the advertiser directly to the network. So if I had, like, a FedEx, don't get me wrong, I bitched about it, because I'm like, I'm here doing these scenes for FedEx, yeah. and I'm not getting a dollar, right? Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, they were like, well, they're a big client of ours, you know, they spend money, blah, 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 which keeps the show going. So, which is true. you know, it's yeah. true. So we did it. This episode, there's two builds in this episode. The first uh, build we're introduced to is the Howard brothers who own an appliance store. The episode implies that you guys are best friends. You've been friends for a long time. And you're gonna build them a tank. Are, are you so friendly with the, the Howard brothers? No, I'm not. Wade was more friendly with them than, with them than I was. Like I said, Wade's an island guy. Uh -huh. I was from Brooklyn. But uh, I know those guys through Wade, so I don't really keep in touch with them anymore. But uh, and the last time we spoke to the Howard brothers, yeah, it's been a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was the last time I did the dishwasher, I think I might have made that call. <laughs> uh, so you decide to you decide to go in there and turn your uh, refrigerator into a tank, which at first it seems like how are they going to do this? But you guys made that build seem seamless almost. Yeah, you know it was funny is because the. In the beginning, you'll notice we started turning a lot of different things into aquariums. Mm -hmm. That was like yeah. the kind of the, 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 the niche. Yes, the yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. it was fun. And that evolved from, you know, turning things into to, you know, making them into these artful creations, right? Yeah. So, but that was that was unique. Doing, being able to gut something and, and put it in, like when we did the washer and dryer. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that, yeah. stuff, that stuff was fun. That stuff was kind of cool. One. Yeah, that was kind of cool. <laughs> we kind of see the transition here because you have that gimmicky one in the refrigerator, but then you go and we meet Dr. Joe with West Bay Orthodontics, and he wants an eight foot tank. At least he thinks he wants an eight foot yeah. tank, and you end up upselling him to an eighteen foot tank. Yeah, was that pre planned or was that something that was happening live? You're like upselling the guy. Well, was, I wasn't upselling him as it was happening. That was obviously we talked to him. We talked about what he wanted. Then we talked about possibly upsizing it. And then once we got the storylines down to a science, mm -hmm. then we were able to portray that on television, right? So some some were raw, natural, like where we would just walk in and boom, like, you know, we would just, no one would know anything. Yeah. And then there were some that just, it required some pre-planning. So mm -hmm. that was one that required pre-planning. It's really funny is I now do brand management and I work for a company and on the company is a veterinarian, her name is Dr. Joe. Mm -hmm. And she's gonna be our resident veterinarian. We're gonna be calling her in on later episodes awesome. because giving us pet tips. But the funny thing is, is in my phone, I have Dr. Joe, J-O-E, uh -huh. and then I have Doc Joe, D-O-C-J-O-E. Well, I mean J-O. Well, Dr. Joe is Dr. Joe, J-O-E. Every once in a while, I'll dial his number and thinking it's Dr. Joe. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, oh, my God, oh, my God. And then he'll call me back, and he'll be like, hey, Brett, what's going on? Is everything all right? How's everything going? How's the family? No, no, no. Oh, so great. I still speak to Dr. You know, should we try to call him? Call him. Should we call him? Yes, yeah. Face time. Face time. I can't let me have FaceTime. Why? Face you don't have Jeez. Oh, now, was he, a, was he a friend of yours going into this? Or so he was, we became friends as time went, <laughs> went, 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 went on. Why, who does that face? Watch this, Dr. Joe. See, look, Dr. Joe and Dr. Joe Fala. <laughs> uh, we just called Dr. Joe right here. Let's see if we can get him on. I just called him in a minute. Uh, when's the last time? It's been a couple. Ten years. Couple years. He's yes. gonna hang up on you. He's gonna ghost you like Steven Tyler. Hey, never know. He might, he might <laughs> pick up. He might pick up. I'm kidding. Steven didn't ghost me. Call me. Back I. Know. He did. He did. You want? I want proof. I want the receipts. <laughs> it's still his number though. It's lunchtime. It's not going to like the number is. It's dinner <laughs> time. It's dinner time in New York. Yeah, he's probably he's probably doing some he's races. He's probably doing teeth. Everyone's got a, and you again. I mean, <laughs> I do love your teeth. Well, you. no, Dr. Joe was great. His family was great. You know, we we were going to do another aquarium years later, but it never panned out. But uh, I did I did stay in touch with Dr. Joe. Well, this, this is one where you have to get done within two weeks. Yeah. That seems like a that seems like a, a, a long or fast time. Was that what's the, what's the normal time frame to build a tank? Uh, you know, it takes six to eight weeks, but you can rip a tank out in in a few days. 
The thing is, is that we were always working on more than one tank at a time. Mm-hmm. So you'd work on one tank, and then you'd work on another tank, and you'd work on another tank, and another tank. So we'd have four or five projects going on. So that's why if you called and said, how long is it going to take for an aquarium? I'd tell you six to eight weeks because there's other projects in between there. But realistically, if we would just take the guys to focus on one aquarium, I mean, I would say the week might be the max, you know, on a, on a, on a thousand gallon plus aquarium. Now, when you get back into town, you tell Redneck that this needs to be done in a week because it took a week, you can do a week for travel and everything. He loses his mind when they're filming the show. That's Does, always real. Did yeah, his Redneck have a short fuse? Oh, what? It was his birthday, remember? We yeah, got I a remember. birthday cake? You remember? I remember. That was his birthday that day? No, no, but one, I don't even remember. This He's got a short fuse. That's not, none it of that. It was literally yeah. his birthday. We got him this cake, all these candles, <laughs> little frizzy ones, all of that. But you gotta, he, tell him, you gotta tell him. Okay, go ahead, beat it up. He didn't want a cake. He didn't mm-hmm. want it. And we got him one anyway. Uh-huh. But it was and pretty. It was a nice cake. Yeah. And we thought it was going to be like, I you know, like, like we wanted to film it. So we had all the film crew. We went out and hey, happy birthday. We're saying happy birthday, Renee. Uh. He lost his mind. He got so pissed. <laughs> right, dude? He jumps on his motorcycle. And sped off. And sped off. But wait. Wait. He tries to speed out and he tries to go <laughs> underneath, underneath the gate. Yeah. And he hits the gate yeah. and falls. <laughs> Gets back up, everybody's oh dying, we're like, bye! Oh my God. Oh my God. It, spit out like, left. it was salt in the wound. He like literally hit the garage door. <laughs> he tried to, he tried to do a like an mission impossible oh where you slide so the bike bad. down. No. But These are the stories we want. These are the stories we want. He did and so he was he was so Now where was the footage of this? I agree. It was there's footage of it. I'm, I'm sure there's, there's footage. footage. I don't know where it is, but I'm sure there's I footage. I mean we're all taking so pictures. Mad. We were I mean, because we had and then we're standing there with this cake. We're like, well fuck it, let's eat the cake. Yeah, let's eat the cake. But the thing is is that it's the crazy thing is, Redneck is really like that. Like, I mean, he can be the nicest guy in the yes. world, and then and in, a, in a blink of an eye, he could turn to, like, have the attitude, like, like nobody's business. But like, it's not personal, so you no, can't take it personal. Yeah, yeah, no, it's you, never personal. No. It's just then he comes he, back. You guys always work he, these out. He has a plan. In mm-hmm. his head, he has it structured a, a certain way. And no. then if something gets in the way, like birthday cake, it's just, it, it blows his fuse. Yeah. Just the visual that is hysterical. Oh my God. That's I just, can still, I, I can literally I, I see, can it see it and hear it too. I can literally hear it. There's just so many times with him that we just had a lot of fun. He was a great addition yes. to, to, to the show. People love him. You know yes. what I mean? Yeah. He's literally like a true redneck. Like, like there's a moonshine. no moonshine, yeah. redneck. Like he's got like 19 mm-hmm. grandkids, like redneck. Now, we do, I want to go back to uh, last week, the Jeff Tremaine episode, because we talked about that was in the Hollywood Hills and Redneck had to back the tank up. And we were talking once the podcast was, was over, how Wade had to kind of give him a pep talk. And I guess yeah. you said he did that because Redneck might storm off. Correct. Yeah. So uh, there was only a certain peop- certain amount of people that could like um, kind of calm things. Redneck down. Yeah, I course. was one of them. Brett was not. No. <laughs> Wade is sometimes, but Brett... Red, Red is really, he's a gentle soul, so mm. you have to approach him delicately. You can see that, yeah. Yes. You can so see he's that. Got, he's, a, he's an amazing soul, but sometimes Brett would just be, ah! So he, you know how that, that's, gonna, that's never going to, that's never going to work. So we all had different ways of getting Red to do stuff. We, but let's, we, in the same episode, you arrived with one of the props for the uh, for the tank, the fish head, the shark head. You're all excited about it, and you got it somewhere online. <laughs> and Redneck immediately points out that you made a mistake. Did you look to see what it was made of? He points out the flaws in your thought process. Well, he always does that. Yeah, that's part of the thing. Anytime he can point out my negatives, he's always the first to be like, uh, that shirt you're wearing doesn't really have a nice collar. Uh, you know. I mean, it's anything. It doesn't matter what it he is. He loves collared shirts. It just and, doesn't matter, Redneck. And uh, what's the starch? He loves starch. Oh, does he? He has to have everything starched. He does. He he presents them. So while well, he takes he takes a lot of pride in his hat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he does. I love that. that. You see I the mean, hat? He had like a, a he had like a straw hat yes. that has. A yes. patch that yes. he glued on. He glued it on. He glued ATM's logo yes. onto the hat. Oh, so if you yes. watch the episode, yes. you'll see it's glued on the hat. I have pictures of it. I'll put up. There's I something think. that we see in, I, I think, every episode, and I see it every week we do this podcast. Is is that the same Rolex? Yes, yeah, same one. Really? Yeah. Take care episode of it. one. I take good care of it. Wow. It's five, good. You bring it in every two years, 500 bucks. And get Christian jeweler. Mine's the right same now. one too. And then you really? get it. It's you, not a Rolex. You though. get it fixed, and then you get it. So I'm gonna tell you something. This watch right here is 30 plus years old. Wow. 30 plus years you old. See it on every episode. Every two years, I keep it. You know, 
In, in this episode, your, your dad, the general, is helping dismantle the fridge. A lot of people on social media want to know, how is, how is the general? How's your dad doing? He's doing good. Yeah, he's hanging in there, you know, he's uh, still, still, still... Still tanning? Still tanning, still, okay. you know, busting people's chops. But at the end of the day, he's still doing good. Is he here in he's Las here Vegas? He's here in Las Vegas, yeah, he lives in Vegas, uh-huh. What was your dad's day-to-day job at the shop? <laughs> Lunch. <laughs> All right, so, you know, so I know, you know, my dad, like, he handled vendors. Like, yeah. he would deal with the vendors, and he would deal with the shipping... And he would deal with, you know, uh, tours sometimes. He'd be like the greeter. Like, you know, you know when you go into someone's business and, like, you walk in and the first person you see is, like, this amazing hot receptionist? Mm-hmm. People got to see my That's dad. That's him. He's the amazing <laughs> Yeah, they got, to walk in, they got to walk in and see my dad. And he would, you know, give him their spiel. And he'd be like, so you want to see Bretton Wade for what? And they'd be like, oh, we want to sell him some items. He'd be like, okay, well, look, let's go to lunch first. <laughs> yeah, oh, man, lunch. yeah. Goes, let's go to lunch first. We can discuss it. And if I feel like it's something that they want, then I'll put you in touch with them. That's what he would do. He was, yeah. I've met about 300 people so far in Vegas that have been like, man, I met your dad. I went to lunch with him. I haven't got a chance to meet you yet, but uh, we had a great time at lunch. And mainly two spots, Weiss's Deli or Outback. Yeah, that was his spot. That was his spot. Yeah, yeah. well, it was out back because my brother used yes. to work there, so he used to take care of make sure that my brother got yes. a couple of tips from uh-huh. the yes. clients. And then it was Weiss's Deli because my dad had a special booth there, and it was he he. So my dad would buy a sandwich, and then he would eat half, and then he would take the other half home because yeah. mm-hmm. they're big portions. They're yeah. delicious. Sure. Yeah. A lot of people, uh, what they do is you, we post the podcast and they'll go and watch the episode and then listen to the podcast or vice versa. There, there's something that in, 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 I see in this episode. There's a scene where you're in Wade's office and I'm sure there's an Easter egg or there's just okay. by chance. But in the background from the show, American Chopper, there's like a toy. It's like right behind your head. Is that by chance or is that something you guys planted in the episode? No, so those guys were friends. We yeah. wound up being friends with okay. those guys. We met them through the network and they were big fans of the show mm-hmm. and we told them that hey, you know, one of the reasons why we have a show is because of you guys, because I watched them, and then they would send us gifts, and we met their friends, and back and forth, and we became like that with a lot of the people from Discovery, you know, like the Gator Boys, mm-hmm. and uh, a couple other, it was it was uh, him, and just a couple other people yeah. that were on the network, you know, like we wound up meeting Oprah, I wound up Oprah, meeting yeah. uh, James Woods, Mor- uh, Morgan Freeman, Morgan Freeman, I mean, all these guys were part of the Discovery network, so whenever you go to these big events, Honey Boo Boo. you'd get to meet all of these people. <laughs> I would be bragging. The mom. Yeah, but, you know, but we'd get to meet them and hang out with them. So you I guys great, I, I got a really good celebrity story. Like, here. Yes. Like, great. No, my Oprah story. Oh, yeah. Oh, so God. many, many moons ago, yeah. before that we even had a TV show, I used to send Wade pictures of red carpets. Uh-huh. And like I'd be driving down the street, and I see a truck and have a rolled red carpet. I take a picture of it, and I send it to Wade. And he kept asking me, he's like, dude, why do you keep sending me these red carpets? And I'm like, because that's the red carpet we're going to be on when we're walking down Oprah, big guy. <laughs> right? And then he was like, shut up, you're so stupid. This, this is before the, the show. Right. Yeah. He's like, that show's a dumb idea. We're not going to meet uh, Oprah. I go, dude, we're meeting Oprah. I don't care what you say. I'm getting myself on Oprah. So one day we get invited to this party in Central Park. And it's the owner, David Zaslov. It's his yeah. apartment. And Conan O'Brien used to live there. You can see like the ceilings are like twelve foot tall. The doorways are like seven foot tall. It's Conan O'Brien's like six foot eight, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> we're at this place, and all of a sudden, I'm walking around. I see Tyler Perry. I see James Woods. I see all these people, right? And I'm like tripping out. I'm like, holy cow! I'm like, I gotta get a drink. I go to the bar. I'm standing <laughs> at the bar. And I'm turn around. I look right next to me, and Oprah is standing yeah. right next to me. No, red right dress. Uh-huh. next yeah. to me in a red dress, yeah. and I'm like. Oh my God, no. Oprah, I cannot believe you are standing right next to me. She's like, oh my God, hi, how you doing? Hold on one second. She grabs my hand. She's holding my hand. She has a drink in her other hand, and she's talking to Tyler Perry. And now I'm standing there, shaking. like this, shaking, <laughs> and looking at my watch, because she's got my hand for like five minutes. I go, I can't believe that. She's holding my hand. So I give, her a, I give her a little squeeze, right? She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm like, Oprah, oh my God. I go, you don't understand. I've been such a huge fan fan of yours forever. I go, you know, I want to, I, I, I want to be on the show. She's like, you know, my show has been canceled. I said, no, I said, I know it's been canceled, but I just, I just had to say it. I go, you know, so I'm like, oh, can I get a picture? And she's like, of course. So I'm like, during the night, I'm like, wait, get out your camera, get out your camera. He's like, dude, my battery's dead. And I'm like, look at my battery, my battery's dead. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe it. So I look around and I'm like, 
okay, James Woods got a camera. Jimmy! <laughs> he took it. He, he took a picture of me. James Woods uh -huh. took a picture of me, Wade, and Oprah, yeah. and then sent it to me. It's a great photo. And I had the photo at home of me, Wade, and Oprah. I got to meet Oprah that day. Yeah. Love to drop How cool picture. is that? That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I got to meet Oprah, uh, Susan, uh, Susan... I can't remember her name. Lucci. Lucci. Yeah. I got to meet Susan Lucci. I got to meet James Woods. And the funny thing is about James Woods is when we, going back to when we first met him, we we met him at another event. And I was like, oh my God, James, I'm a big fan. He goes, no, no, call me Jimmy. So I'm like, okay, hey, Jimmy, I know yeah. Jimmy. So then the next de next time was happened to be at the call him party. Jimmy. But I see him earlier in the evening. Uh -huh. And I'm like, wait, wait. It's James Woods again, Jimmy. He goes, Dude, don't embarrass me. Well, me, if we're embarrassed, you, we never do that. Jimmy! <laughs> no, Jimmy! Hey, Jimmy! Right? No, so I'm with him, Jimmy! He, he looks at me, and he gives me, like, the dirty snarl. And I'm like, oh, shit, did I do something wrong? And he, like, he looks at me, he looks at me, and he beelines through the crowd right for me. And he's like, you know what? You're never going to believe this. My grandkids love you. I need pictures. No. I need pictures. Oh, that's great. So he's taking pictures of me earlier in the night for his grandkids. That's how he knew he had the camera. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Jimmy, take the pictures of me and Oprah. He came right over and he took the pictures of me and Oprah. So I actually got that picture from James Woods that night. That's, that's pretty cool. cool huh? Should we call Oprah and see if she picks up? Yeah, I don't oh know. My God. That. Unfortunately, that's one number I didn't get. I probably that's saw. awesome. No, I had a story like that, too, really quickly. Yeah. I was going to Napa. Did I tell the story with Napa? No. I was going to Napa with a bunch of girlfriends uh, for a girl's getaway. And so we landed. We're getting our bags at Southwest. There's like 20 of us. And this guy comes up to me. He's like, hey, my kids really love the show. I go, oh, very cool. He's like, can I take a picture? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. He's like, here's my card. He, it was Mark Bedane. Of the Raiders. Raiders, really? Before Raiders were even in thought Vegas. about here. I remember like, this. He, yeah, remember? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I called Brett. I'm like, hey, do you know this Mark Bidane? Because I didn't really, I'm not. I was Would she go here? No, she goes, hey, he just told me the Raiders are coming to Vegas. Yeah, he told me. This is before anyone. Before anyone, anyone knew. Who was, what was he with the Raiders? He yeah. was the president. Oh, okay. He, he, he was so the Mark Davis is the owner. Yeah, Mark he was the president. Davis. Got it. And he tells so, they're coming so to he, Vegas. He gives me the thing. He's like, yeah, I think we're going to be moving to Vegas. I'm like, oh, cool. And I'm not thinking anything. I'm like, okay, cool. We take a picture. You know, and, and then all these years later, like, oh, and then happened. he comes to the shop. And he's actually, so sweet. yeah, he's so cool. He's not the president anymore. Yeah. He resigned, but I wound up becoming friends with Mark. I caught a yeah. dinner with him, he's, hung out, so talked. Cool. We yeah, still keep in touch. But yeah, it's that's the one good yeah. thing is a lot, not a lot, but a good portion of the celebrities. You know, we still call up. Like you see Jeff, obviously yeah. come on the show. Yeah. We have Johnny Damon on the show. Fernando Vargas. You know, we're gonna have Dwight Howard. We're gonna have hopefully a lot of these celebrities because they all enjoyed. What we brought to the table. They all had a great time. Speaking you know, up, we shouldn't. We need to have Marcus back because he won the fight. That's right. Our guy won. Our guy won. He did win. The show's on streak. <laughs> it's it, this is a real fun episode, and we and when you guys get the the shark tank there to the doctor's office, Wade gets shirtless to get inside this tank to kind of get things set up, but. He still has like his jogger pants on. Yeah. Why doesn't he a, put on a bathing suit or put on a wetsuit when he's crawling in these tanks? Well, we probably didn't have one at the time. Yeah. Okay. It was season two. The <laughs> budget was thin. Yeah. It's you know, fun. and it was probably something that was a spur of the moment thing that had to be done. Okay. You know, and and obviously, under normal circumstances, it probably wouldn't have been Wade that went inside the aquarium. Mm -hmm. But for television purposes, we had to do everything. Yeah. That was the difference between. Television and reality. You guys are on four clips on this episode, both moving the tank around. But in reality, like I never did that. Like in on, like I wouldn't. That wasn't my job. The show that was my job. Yeah. But in re, in reality, like I sat in an office and yeah. sold aquariums. But I had teams to do all that. Did you know how to work a forklift, or was that just for show? I mean, I knew how to work forklift. But I mean, Wade, I wasn't the Wade, greatest Wade at it. Wade was better at it. Wade's much better. You can see that through many episodes. Wade he jumps was, on that forklift. Yeah, well, he's been driving it for years. Wade I Wade and Kyle did most of it. Yeah. Now there was um, there was uh, during this filming this episode, you guys made headlines for another reason. If you care to explain? So it's pretty funny. As you know, we went back to Long Island and we're filming this episode in front of Plus's appliances, and they're doing some shots with Wade. <laughs> and the next thing you know is I hear people screaming. So I'm like, man, what's going on? Let me come out. Let me run outside and see what's going on. So I walk outside. And they're like, hey, you see that guy over there? He just pulled out a knife and threatened everybody. I'm like, who? That guy right there? I'm like, oh, really? I start chasing him. The dude turn takes off running, right? So I chase him, I chase him, I chase him through bushes. We hop over cars, look underneath cars, through bushes, into a restaurant. And the dude throws his knife underneath the car. And then he bolted in this restaurant. Well, the restaurant tried to go out the back door, and the back door was locked. So mm -hmm. he was locked in the restaurant. 
and the police came, mm-hmm. and we wound up, he wound up getting arrested, I wound up making the news, and after he got to it, and they were like, you had a blade like this long, and they were like, are you out of your mind? Yeah. What do you no. think? But my instinct, you know, that's just me, that's just who it's I am. It's your case, right? Yeah. It took over, and I was like, who's no one's gonna threaten my partner like that, especially in my TV show. Yeah, and there was a whole crew there. The whole crew. The whole crew was there, the guy was wailing a knife around. Yeah, and I just, they needed, they could just chase them down, and that was it. So we have cool. pictures of this, or? There we are might, pictures. You know, I just might have some photos. I have, I have photos. Yeah, we might have photos. Wait, photos. so speaking of where uh, uh, Wade was in his underwear, did you ever see the painting that someone did for them where they have the... It was <laughs> a painting. It was Ryan's... Ma- it was one of the magazines that we they did. Have, I think it was Ryan's magazine. They're butt naked, yeah. and they just have, like, a starfish. So we're, we're doing a photo shoot. Oh, Vegas magazine. Yeah, yeah we're doing a photo movie. shoot, did and they're see? like, we want to do something crazy, extraordinary, over the top. Wade's like, I don't care. I'll get naked. And, and they go, that's it! Yep. You guys are gonna get naked in the aquarium. Uh-huh. So I'm like, did you ever see this? No. Thing? So we got naked. We got naked. <laughs> and the only thing that's covering me is a conch shell. Yeah, and I think starfish for waves. No. Yeah, we're well, like this. Yes. Yes. This is early on yes. season. Uh, early on season two. Yeah, season early, seven. Yeah. I wouldn't have done it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was too famous then. Yeah, season two, did I get naked in the aquarium? I'm like, yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah, you know, those are the changes. Yeah. Exactly. Those are some of the big changes. <laughs> this episode, your sister flies out with you. Was that was that common practice for her to take road trips with you guys? Mm, you know, once in a while she would. They would, you know, in the beginning, I think that they wanted to. They were really pushing the family dynamic. We well, see it at the end with with the, her and. Uh, but then when they uh, what they realized, I think as time went on, it was really difficult to have everybody in the same place all the time. Yeah. Because we all had things to do. So you know, it was like I said, it was a great family show. It was a great family dynamic, and. Uh, it was it was great for what she it, wanted what? to go because she wanted to spend time with Wade. It got to to the point where she wasn't seeing Wade much, mm-hmm. obviously, right? Because the schedules were yeah. really really tight, and so it was a time to also kind of vacation. And you get back to chance to go back to New York, yeah, you know, see so your family. That yeah. so so yeah, it became a dual purpose. Now in this episode too, we see you uh, with the transferring these sharks from one tank to another. It seems like a very intense process, at least the way the show was edited. Have you ever been bitten or have one of those transfers go south? I mean, Wade's been bitten before. I've watched him get bit, have teeth stuck, pull him out of his out of, out of his uh, hand mm-hmm. um, with a, a lemon shark. Uh, but you know, we didn't really transfer sharks a ton of times. You know, but when we did it, obviously that's how it was done. It was done, you know, by hand and to make sure that the fish, the safety of the fish. Is that, and you said too in an episode that uh, a shark never stops growing. Is that true? That is true. So people think that you can put a shark inside of an aquarium and it's going to grow to the size of the tank. Same thing with fish. That's not true. It's not true. It's not like true. Like the eel. You said that on the episode. Yeah, though. it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to keep growing. They didn't have backlining. Uh, They're going to keep No fact check is that. <laughs> now, if you're going to grow, I mean, look, what's going to stop them from growing and reaching their potential size is food. At the end of the yeah. day, you know, you feed it's them, like you feed them, and they're going to keep growing. You know. Speaking of just the, uh, do you know how much it costs to maintain a tank? Because I love this little fun fact. Yeah, well, we tell Wait, people. Oh. Do you know JC? Yeah. The cost, it's about a, a dollar per gallon. For salt water, and then about 50 yeah. cents a gallon for fresh water on a monthly yeah. basis. So we have a hundred gallon aquarium. It's fifty bucks for fresh and a hundred bucks for salt. Amazing. That's why my fish didn't live because we put zero dollars. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Water's running low. <laughs> All right. Right. Beautiful. Anything else you guys want to cover in this episode? No, I just think that was I, it was an early episode. So when people start to you know if they go back and watch this episode and then they go back and watch the later on episodes, you see such a change in the dynamic uh-huh. of the show uh, from one to the other. You know, it's just it's really weird because like this morning I watched season two yeah and then i watched season four right so you can even from season two to season four you can even see the difference but as you get further in to season yeah. six and season seven you start seeing like only me in an episode and only like well, the darkest one was the two of you yeah. right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. things just happen you know but uh it was fun doing this ch- I, I really like changing turning things into something that was a really yeah. big part of what i had in my mind when i created the show was like because what gave me the original idea too of the Orange County Choppers is that Wade had done this car aquarium for the Smithsonian Institute with another aquarium he had worked, uh, another aquarium company he had worked for. And I'd always seen that car aquarium mm-hmm. and they turned this car. That was pretty amazing. So we wound up doing that too, which we'll discuss in another episode. That we actually wound up uh, duplicating that and turning a Toyota RAV4 into a SpongeBob oh, yes. aquarium. So the SpongeBob, I was talking about. SpongeBob, yeah. Yeah, yes. So yeah, yes. so we did that for SEMA. We we yes. we got top five cars in all of SEMA. 
this wow. Pin my, pin my rides, remember? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, was, it was it was pretty incredible. So that'll be another episode we'll do in the future. Yeah, but, yeah, we're sure. but turning something into something was really the, the premise of how the show came about. Speaking of, you were just at the Mob Museum, I saw. I did, I did a uh, TV interview with the guys. That, yes. Yes. So we had a thank you. Yes, we, yep. we did. We did. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that was season one. Well, that was the original. Was the mall museum. Yes. Yeah. And there was the with mall the experience. Right. Right. So the original one, there's one okay, down the Tropicana. Right. What's, That's the what's, right. That was yeah. the original. Yes. And then downtown. Downtown. Now, yeah. Mm-hmm. In the speakeasy, you have a tank. I have a tank in the speakeasy. Wow. Yeah. And you were just there. I remember. Yeah. I saw. Oh, speaking of, did you ever get your footage back? My footage back. That the way you guys lost on the radio. No. So I do a radio yeah. show. And I've been doing a radio show since oh my 1997. God, my heart broke. Tell everybody a little about your show. Yeah, so my it's, heart it's broke. Mercedes in the morning, yes. Mix 94.1. Yes. We've been doing this show since 1997. And I've saved everything. Best of bits. I mean, think about that first time. A loved one that comes on the show, talking about my wedding, Mercedes' wedding, kids. lost loved one, the birth of her kids, her daughter just turned 18. All this, all it saved. Years and years and years and years and years. Oh For some reason, someone in the building decided to do some spring cleaning. And they threw out the cabinet yeah. that had everything inside it. Oh. And they could, and that you did not get it back. Didn't get it back. And we didn't find out until like after it was not like it's like outside, not until after the fact. We're like, wait, where's our filing cabinet with everything in it from 1997 until today? They threw it out. My yeah. heart broke when I listened. That's to that. almost yeah. as that's that's almost as bad as my dad uh, when I was about 17, mm-hmm. and I lived with my mom and dad back and forth. You know, stayed in a divorced household. Yeah. And I, my dad moved, and I came to my dad. And I said, Dad, there was three garbage bags underneath the stairs. What did you do with them? He goes, they were garbage. I threw them out. I go, you didn't bother looking. He goes, oh, they were in garbage bags. My entire card and comic book collection. Oh. As a kid that I had been collecting since I was 10. Oh. And I had, I'm talking like Superman number one, yeah. X-Men number ones. I had, you know, baseball cards from back in uh, oh. the day. I mean, so he threw all that away uh, from 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 my childhood. I, stable. You guys were, so I heard last that you were going to go Look through the dumpsters. We, thought about going to the, we, know, we looked at the dumpsters at the radio station was long gone. Because we, we, they had done it uh, like a couple weeks ago, and we just discovered it like this past week. I'm like, hey, where's this filing cabinet? Let's go check with the, the engineer. Yeah. like, oh, we got rid of it. Yeah. You wouldn't check with us first? So. Yeah. That's one thing on the last note. I just think another good thing is that uh, that's one of the reasons why I wanted this show to be successful. Mm-hmm. Because most people don't realize that this is a legacy. Yeah. So now, Agnes, yeah. myself, Wade, my sister, my family, yeah. we're going to live on forever. Yeah. Like people can find this in archives. Yeah. Don't have to worry about it. It's going to be digitally somewhere at any given time. So for my grandkids, grandkids, all the way on, on, on down, they're going to have something for the, forever to look back on. And that, to me, is the most special part of making a television show, right. is that legacy live on. And now we get to relive and create more memories with you and yeah. everyone, everyone this here. This is great. That's awesome. Well. That's awesome. That was a great episode. That'll do it for... Episode number nine, we're good? Yep, see you next week. All right, sounds good. See you guys.